Okay? You can always try to recover guard, right? If you're good at guard, you can recover guard and, and play from the bottom if you want to do that. But if you are interested in taking them down and imposing a top game, I recommend trying to stay on the feet initially. I recommend trying to hit this feet, like trying to hit this technique from here. And trying to stay on the feet. So if he does not go down, if he comes up, and he doesn't go down, I can try again. I can try again. Okay? Now, your ankles are getting get bruised. <laughs> you okay? Okay. Um, so we saw how I committed my body weight down in the floor this time. So we did see that I can step to the ankle line, commit my body weight down in the floor and say, and I land on my hand or land on my elbow. So I can win the head height battle. Now I get hiked up, cover his hips, and I have down the position. As an aside, as a side note, Seriously, let's talk about safety on this move. So I've seen people do this move in the past, where the head's in front, their head's in front of the body. Okay, if I do this move where my head's in front of the body, he has a wide stance. I've, I have not seen it personally. Actually, I think I might, have, I might, have, I think I have one or twice. But I've heard a lot of terrible stories about people who try to sit and they sag their body weight. They sag. And you feel that? I am an ant. Be very, very careful with this technique. And understand, it's easy to not hurt anybody with this technique. All you have to do is keep your head behind. As a general rule, if your head, not even as a general, as a hard and fast rule, as a hard and fast rule, if your head is in front, I do not want you to try the rear trip in here, not in the training hall. It's too risky, too much, too risky. I don't want you guys sitting here and sitting your weight onto the side of the knee. Okay, when I when my head's in front, I come in on the side. When my head's behind, let's say I'm here, maybe I use a lapel tight waist and a knee grip. This is another great way to hit this technique. I can go from here, hit the cross of the lapel tight waist, and take a knee grip. Now I step to the ankle, and you'll see that when I go into this technique, I don't sit on the knee at all. There's no danger to the knee. 100% safe, I'm not gonna hurt my partners. But if I do, if I keep my head in front, if I have the lapel tight waist, my head in front, and I go in here, you might put your buddy in the hospital. Okay, you don't wanna break your partner's knee. That, that will wreck, they, they can be out of jujitsu for six months, a year, it can, it's catastrophic. You sag and crash. Okay, so never do this trip with the head in front. Only with the head behind where you're not going to put pressure on that knee. Okay, now we've got the safety out of the way. We have the rear trip, again, where we stay standing. Or we have the sacrifice trip where I commit my hips down to the floor. But if you're going to do that, be darn sure they come down with you. You don't want to pull them down on top of you. Any other rear? Oh, another form of drag and takedown is the cross trip. I get my rear clinch. On this one, I'm going to back step with my legs so my ankle line and Ant's ankle line are perpendicular to each other. Stir your ankle line to the camera. Mine runs like so, his run like so, 90 degrees to each other. Now from here, my right leg back steps and I drop to my right knee and my left leg steps across. So this is a lot like our cross forward trip from the front. In judo, we call it, it's called the Tayotoshi in front. In the back, it's called, uh, uh, I, don't, I, don't, I, can't, I can't remember what it was called here. Something else, okay. uh -huh. <laughs> Yeah, probably. But the idea is that we're doing a cross forward trip, just like we did from the front. And now from here, I'm just gonna use my tight waist to sag him down to the floor, like so. Now, an ant lands. If he throws his legs out, if he sits up and scoops inside my leg here, he can hit something called a switch where he now he pulls himself around my back. Oh, yes! Just like so. So to make sure you don't get hit with that switch, let's keep our knee down once he, once he falls. So we're up. I have my, my rear clinch. I can go the straight trip. Or if I want to do the cross trip, I line up perpendicular. I drop to my knee and step across. You could also step across first and then try to drop to the knee. You pull them. Now, if he tries to go for a switch, we drop our knee. 
and that was a smash. If he starts to come up on an elbow, that's fine. I can grab the wrist. I feed through to my rear wrist ride grip. And now what do we use this grip for? Well, right now we have a hip breakdown position and I could use this grip to do what, Ant? Shoulder, Shoulder breakdown. Absolutely. Come in with the claw grip. Take your hook in. Chair sit to the back. <laughs> so we saw our straight rear trip. And now we saw this cross rear trip. The next dragging takedown we're going to look at from the back are going to be butterfly hook takedowns. We have single cross methods and double straight method. Rear clinch. Let's look at the, let's look at double straight first. I think that'll be easier for you to comprehend. Now from right here, Ant's got a good strong position. I'm going to step the ball of my foot onto the back of his knee right here, placing it just like so. Okay, you can do this with a butterfly hook as well. So that's why I call this the double straight butterfly hook takedown. But I also find I get a lot of power with the ball of my foot. They're both okay. Now with the ball of my foot in the back of the knee, I'm gonna hop, and I'm gonna, when I hop, I'm gonna take my right foot to the back of this knee. We go, we go here. Yeah. And I'm sorry, I, just, I didn't do that right. I don't put the bottom of my foot on the knee. I put my butterfly hook on the knee. This one I can go foot for more power. This one I don't want to kick too hard when I fall. So I place my shin, shin behind the knee. So I go foot here and then I jump and I place my shin. Hands going to keep a base and I go here. And now from here I can start putting my hooks in. So we land here. We land here initially with them too high. I'm going to take my two butterfly hooks now, hooking here, and I'm going to straighten the legs out, sitting forward. Now we're into a seated breakdown. Now I just put my hook in, and I fall onto my bottom hook. And now we're ready to start trapping arms and going through and getting the finish. <clears throat> so again, however I get there, maybe I hit an arm drag, I go to the back, we're here. I can either go with a shin or the ball of my foot. The first leg can be shin or ball. The second leg makes shin. It's, you're more likely to hit the knee. Second leg, when you hop, hop and land into a rear butterfly hook. So I can go shin first. Here. And now I'm going to start pushing them down, putting my hooks in. Come back up. If we end up too high like this, I might just start putting my hooks in right here. And drag them down as well. Oh, it's too high. I might just be able to take my hook in, like so. So that's our double straight method. We also have our single cross method. So I'm here. Another option that I have is to come in with my butterfly hook like so. So my cross leg goes and I make a butter, kind of a butterfly hook on the other side. Usually in a butterfly hook, my knee's on the outside and my foot's on the inside. But with this single cross one, my knee's actually on the inside and my foot's on the outside. Now from here, I'm going to sag my body weight as I hop toward Ant's support leg over here, the one over on this side. So I sag as I hop, and I drag it down. When I land, remember that my knee was on the inside. I connect my knee to my elbow. So now Ant has two choices. He can either turn away from me, or I can look to take the back, or he can turn into me, where I can sort of drive my knee through the top of the hip, and I force the flank position. Basically. So we come in, maybe I hit this arm drag to the back. Now I come in with my single butterfly hook. My knee piercing, that's rotating, through the middle. When I fall, my knee and my elbow connect, like so. Okay, so we're here. And I hop toward the leg and sag. My knee and my elbow connect and I roll to the top position. And now from here, I establish the flank position. 
that I can either work to pass the guard from here, or if Ant turns away from me, I can start putting, putting hooks in and attacking the turtle that I do with power half. All right, now let's look at some options where I take my point down in a forward direction. So we get to a rear clinch, and we've already seen these, okay? I got a forward trip. If, he's a, if he has a narrow stance, his stance is narrow. I come around, forward trip. I can go foot to foot and knock him down to either a turtle or a four point. If he goes four point, we can go asymmetrical hooks and power half. Or we use our spiral breakdowns. And we break him down to this position here and we take the back. That was a foot to foot outside trip. We also have a knee to knee outside trip. I get to the back. Now I come in, I step around the corner. I step in knee to knee. Rotate. From here. I step around the corner and I go knee to knee. And now with, my, with his knee caught between my two knees, I drive his head toward the floor and I force him to either a turtle position and I attack the turtle or I force him up into a four point position and then I attack the four point position. So that is an outside trip. Again, you can go foot to foot using the sole of your foot to catch their ankle or you can go knee to knee using their, your knee to block their knee and you pitch them forward. Then we have uh, the same exact stuff from the inside trips. I'm here. I see Ant's weight is a little forward, so I come in with the inside trip and I knock him forward. Let's do that again. See what happened there? I tried to pull back too much. I tried to pull back and it didn't work. Kick the foot straight out to the side. Knock him down. He either goes in the turtle, and then we use our turtle breakdowns. Or we'll go into a four point. And we go into our four point breakdowns. There's one more technique uh, for the takedowns, and that's the uh, rear ankle pick. On the rear ankle pick, I'm going to pass off to a lapel tight waist on this one. I grab a lapel tight waist because I need a free hand. In a body lock where my hands are connected, I can't do an ankle pick. I use a lapel tight waist. Here. My left hand goes to his knee. Now I want to drop and grab the ankle. Rotate. Okay. I, I go here, I have the knee. So when the ant moves around, I have these grips. And it's hard for me to get away. Try to get away here. These are very strong grips, the pel tight waist and knee. Now from here, I want to drop down to my knee and go to an ankle pick. The key to finding success with this rear ankle pick is to take your left, I'm sorry, your shoulder, the shoulder that's hugging him around with the pel tight waist, and take your shoulder below his buttocks. Here. When my shoulder goes below the buttocks, I can now grab this ankle very easy. Hands always go down to the floor. Now I got somebody in the either a turtle position or he extends his legs going into a four point and we know what to do from here. We knock him down. So again, the rear ankle pick. Maybe we're here, collar tie. I slip up, we hit your rear clinch. Now from the rear clinch, I establish my lapel tight waist. And I take a grip here on the knee. These grips make it very tough for Ant to, to turn and face me. Now for the ankle pick, I'm going to drop to my knee, one knee. And as I drop to my knee, I slip my right shoulder in this case, below his hips. Right here. Now my, light, my right shoulder is below his butt, below his hips. My left hand's on the ankle. I'm just going to drive forward and pick the ankle up. He goes up into a four point, maybe I come in. And I go into my asymmetrical hooks, and I break them down with a power half. All right, one and 
information so far. We've established the rear clinch. We've gotten entries to the rear clinch. We saw how to off balance our opponent from the rear clinch with trips and sweeps. We saw how to take our opponent down from the rear clinch, going forward and going backward. We got trips going backward, trips going forward, ankle picks, butterfly hooks, sweeps, etc. Lastly, let's talk about the simple idea of mat returns. Simply returning our opponent to the mat when they want to come back up. This could be a number of scenarios. This could be a situation where um, I do a collar drag, the turtle, I come up, the turtle and hand stands up. And now I need to return him to the mat. It's just all the same stuff we've been working on, guys. The rear, rep, rear mat returns are literally just all the same stuff we've done from the rear clinch. Ankle picks, forward trips, backward trips, etc. So rear mat returns, even though it's a different name, don't let it scare you or intimidate you. It's just all the same stuff you just learned, just worked on. Then we got to do front mat returns. Mat returns, returning our opponent to, a, to the mat when they're turning and facing us. When they're, okay. So let's say, for example, I come in, I hit a single leg takedown. And now I see Ant takes his head and shoulders off the floor. It looks like he wants to stand back up. As I see him trying to stand back up, I know this leg's not going anywhere. It's planted. It's this one that's going to move. So as he, as he pulls his leg away from me, I grab the pant cuff here. As he stands back up, I keep the pant cuff off the floor. Now I come in, I get the lapel. I can either, and now I can start doing figure eights, where I start back stepping to the left, pulling his head to the mat this way. As he recovers and tries to stand back up, then we go in the other direction. We take him back down. This could be literally any anything. Maybe I hit a little trip down to the floor. Maybe I'm here, he's got my lapel. I take the grip off. I come in. I hit a trip. He tries to stand back up. I score the lapel. Stand back up. All right. <laughs> very, very hard. Very hard. All right. You get that lapel, or this cuff grip, it's hard for him to stand up. Now let's say, this time I make it so he can stand up. He grips, I break the grip, I come in, maybe I hit a little grip down to the floor. He goes to stand back up, I take the, the pant cuff, he stands up, face me, I get the lapel, pull him forward, pull him backward, keep him out of balance, don't let that foot back on the floor. Get this pant cuff grip, and don't let that foot back on the mat. Very hard for him to stand up, very hard for him to recover position. Okay, double leg. You come in. He goes down to the floor. I feel him starting to fight back to his feet. He's trying to hip heist down the way. I grab a cuff. Keep going. Keep going. I grab a cuff. I stand up. Head down this way. Head down this way. Okay. So mat returns from the rear are just all the rear mat takedowns or rear takedowns we looked at. Matt takedowns from the front, very, very uh, different animal, but also a topic we looked at before. Remember double seated position? Double seated out here. Or, yeah, just here. Maybe I knock him down with a double ankle stand up. Maybe we're here. I got his ankles, I knock him down. Now we're in a double seated position. Do you guys remember this from our open guard chapter? Remember how to win the fight for top position? When Ant and I try to both fight for top position together. He's going to go to get on top. I'm going to go to get on top. I grab this cuff, pant cuff. So now Ant and I go to both get on top. And he can't get on top because I have the cuff. He can't put his foot down. So it's the same idea that we looked at in open guard from double seated position, but now we're applying it to takedowns. We take them down. If we think this person's going to scramble up and away and try to get back to their feet to avoid being scored on or to avoid being in the bottom position, try to score that pant cuff grip. If you get that pant cuff and you just keep that foot from hitting the floor, you keep elevating that foot, it's hard for them to keep their balance. Even harder when you grab a lapel grip and you get a grip really close to the head and you start pulling the head all around the mat and they're hopping on a single foot 
it's hard for them to stay on their feet when we put them down. All right, so that's the uh, that's the long and short of the rear clinch. We went through a lot, of, a lot of good material today. This is one of my favorite positions to get into to reliably and consistently hit strong takedowns. If I can get to the rear clinch, that's a big advantage on your opponent. Again, recapping, you got to know how to establish it. Finger to finger, palm to palm, wrist to wrist, lapel tight waist, the wrist ride. Okay, you've got different gripping options. Pocket of the elbow to the hip, one long arm, one short arm. Good head position so they can't turn into you. Good shoulder position so they can't turn away from you. Once we establish the rear clinch, we looked at a lot of different ways to get that arm past our center line and to establish the rear clinch. We can do it proactively by trying to get that arm across our center line directly, or we can find the rear clinch and scrambles off of the, our takedowns and off of their takedowns. Once we get to the rear clinch, we want to keep them out of balance. We're going to harass their feet, the trips and sweeps, and we're going to keep those hips moving so that they constantly have to focus on just staying and standing up. They don't give them time to focus on escaping, make them focus on just staying on their damn feet. Once we got their balance challenge, now it's time to go in for takedowns. And we saw, just like we, like, just like we did from the front, guys, we have dragging takedowns when our opponent is more upright and maybe leaning backward. And we have driving takedowns when our opponent is leaning forward and maybe driving more forward. So you just gotta pay attention to that energy. If they're standing up or leaning back, take them backward. If they're leaning forward or driving forward, take them forward. Forward trips, ankle picks. If they're standing up, back trips cross back trips, rear butterfly hook takedowns. Then finally, when you have somebody who's trying to fight back to their feet, put them back on the floor. If they're getting back up to their feet, they're gonna gain an athleticism, they're gonna get faster, they're gonna get more powerful. We wanna keep their hips on the floor where they have very limited athletic potential. We wanna return them to the mat. We can do that from the rear with all the rear takedowns we looked at today. And we can also do that from the front just by controlling that pant cuff grip and keeping their foot off the floor. With that foot off the floor, we pull the head down, circle the head around the mat, until eventually they crumble back down and lose their balance. Good work today, guys.